Now that we've come to the end, can you tell me a little bit about your first century mother Mary and Joseph and what they're actually doing now? Sure. Um, how far do you want me to go? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> how much time you know, do we have? Well, well, basically, you know, they've been alive for 2,000 years yes. and a bit longer than what I have. So <laughs> if I were to relate their entire life, obviously. Well, what they're doing, time. you know, what their projects say are now. Sure. Well, they are both firstly in the one condition with God mm. and they are also at one with each other. In other words, mm. they've, they've completed the soul union yeah. and they are in the soul union state in, in what I feel now is the 36th dimension of the spirit world, wow. right? Now, um, they, they, in that state, have a huge amount of uh, abilities of things to do. Now, of course, the first thing that we engage ourselves in doing in that state is trying to help people on earth to also reach the same state. So, um, but the thing is in that state, when you're in a union state, you can manifest thousands of bodies at the same time. Mm. You can also manifest bodies on earth under certain conditions mm -hmm. at the same time, lots of them. So you have a way to share divine truth and help people have experiences to ga gather the truth and change in their heart through lots of different, you could call them manifestations of your own energy. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. So they do that constantly. Mm. They are also in a complete union state with themselves, so that they, they no longer see themselves as Joseph and Mary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they see themselves as people who once thought of themselves as Joseph and Mary. Yeah. Um, they uh, still remember all of their experiences, of course, right through that 2,000 years mm -hmm. or so of their existence. And they spend the majority of their time sharing divine truth mm -hmm. with other people in the spirit world. Uh, in lower dimensions than right. they themselves exist. Right. There, there is a large amount of work to be done still. Like if you consider there's 7 billion people on the mm. planet, there is also around 30 billion people in the spirit world at this point in time who have not, who, who have incarnated and left the earth. And of those billions, the majority of them are not, haven't, haven't even um, received God's love. Wow. When I say the majority, yeah there's only a few billion that have received God's love. So in terms of percentages, only a few percent of the entire population that's ever lived on this planet mm. have actually received God's love. So that means there's a lot of work to do. Mm. And unfortunately, a lot of the work uh, revolves around shifting people from conditions of a lot of resistance and a lot of denial. And that requires generally a lot of effort as well. So they're have spent, they have spending their time educating and mm. as they go. But it's not only that. It's also like each time you progress through a dimension, obviously the new dimension has a whole heap of new truth associated with it. So it's like a universe yeah. right, in its own yeah. right. And in this universe, there's a whole heap of new truths about God and about the uni God's universe that you can discover, right? Mm. Now... If you've been a spirit who's lived in that universe or that dimension for a long period of time and absorbed a lot of God's love, you understand a lot of that universe. But a person who's in the universe below or, or the sphere or dimension below mm. you, they don't know any of those things. Mm. And somehow you want to help them to know so that they can get to enjoy the same amount of happiness and love that you enjoy. Mm. So, so a large part of your work is educating uh, other spirits mm. to come to understand and know at a soul level, not at an intellectual level, mm. the things that you have come to understand and know. Mm. So they are helping a lot of spirits at this point in time to attempt to engage the soul union condition. Right? Because at the moment, I'm not there, Mary's not there to, to help people with those particular things to engage as much as we could be, um, but, but there are other spirits now who have reached that condition who are trying to assist other spirits in the, in the celestial spheres right. to reach that union condition. And we see that as a pretty important role because, because without that occurring, it, it's like this, the, the more and more development we get in the spirit world, the greater the influence we can have on truth and love on the earth. Yes. And on any place in the spirit world up until the point of where which we are developed. Does that make sense? So 
So if we're in the union state, we have this beautiful ability to help every spirit, billions and billions of people from that state down to the state of the bottom of the hills Mm. just by our own changes in conditions of love, Mm. by our growing, by Mm. our discovering new truth. Mm. So that's also what they're employed doing as well. Mm. So they have a large degree of responsibility in that regard, Mm. uh, as do some other spirits who have Mm. reached the same condition. They have not reached their condition because they're my mum and dad. No, they've worked on them themselves. They've had to do it of for course. themselves. They've of had course. to enter this relationship with God for themselves, yeah. engage the re- receipt of divine love for themselves, mm. develop humility and a desire for the truth themselves. Yeah. And if they hadn't have done that, they wouldn't have reached the condition mm. they're currently in. Mm. 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 And so reports of um, the apparitions, say, in Fatima in Portugal and... Mm. Um, in France, in Lourdes, and mm-hmm. just more, more recently. They seem to be, <clears throat> the, 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 I don't know whether this is true or not, but the crux is, is to get people to start praying. It's yes, always... um, sometimes these apparitions are not anything well, to do with this... spirits of a divine nature. Okay. Sometimes yeah. these apparitions are church supporters who exist in mm. the spirit world who are trying to increase the longevity of the church. Yeah, yeah. Other times, though, they are spirits of a higher nature mm. trying to inspire people to prayer. and Especially before there's some terrible war or something, there'll be a... Yes, but often they it's... are also spirits often that are, are more concerned about men entering war than the higher spirits are. The higher okay. spirits realise that war is just an effect of the condition of the human soul okay. that is out of harmony with love. And so the higher spirits are more focused on changing the human soul into a condition of love than Mm. praying about a war. Yeah, I think they were preventing. I think all all about prevention and about a transformation. Yeah, the higher spirits don't want to prevent a war um, in the sense that they don't want to uh, physically attempt a deed that would prevent a war. Okay. What they it's a want waste to of do, energy, more or less. It is because the yeah. cause of war exists in the human soul, yeah. in the people who want to go to war, and what the higher spirits want to do is change the human soul sure. so that there's no longer the cause to mm. go to war. Mm-hmm. So the higher spirits focus more, uh, less on physical manifestations and more on changing or on helping the human soul change. Mm. So a lot of these physical manifestations aren't actually mm. apparitions of And my... some of them are a bit creepy. Though, yeah, yeah. A lot of them are dark ble- spirits. Bleeding, fa- bleeding uh, faces and, and all this yeah, kind of thing. That. They are quite dark spirits mm. who do these kind of things. Mm. And they do these kind of things in order to either scare people back into a religious faith mm. or to, 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 to suggest to people that their religious faith is the truth. Okay. Uh, the reality is no bright spirit above the eighth dimension would appear to anyone on earth in, uh, in a form like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So anytime you see a form where it's, you know, blood from and coming from it or, no, no. you know, the so-called marks of the stigmata mm. or so forth, mm. these are all lower level spirits. Yeah. Who are and, in, you know, get, scent of roses and that and all that kind of thing. Yeah, all. sometimes scents can be attributed to higher spirits, mm. but... Oftentimes, physical manifestations are not about higher mm. spirits and their mm. actual motivations, yeah. but rather they're more about um, what people on earth expect from a higher spirit mm. to do. Of course. And of course, because their yeah. addictions are impure, a lower spirit comes along yeah. and does such the, th- the thing yes. that's yes. expected. Yeah. Mm. Oh, very good. And as you were saying, <coughs> Mary and Joseph now are one anyway. So wherever <coughs> one goes, the other one's there. So... Well, yes, but not in the way in which you think. Right. You see, a a union, a unified soul is capable of having multiple spirit and material bodies attached to it at the same time. So it may look like they're acting separately, but from their own perspective, they are unified in a complete whole and completely acting harmoniously. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But it may appear to the person who's interacting that they've talked to Mary or talked to Joseph. Okay individually, okay. but that's not actually possible when you're in a unified soul. You're just talking to a physical, uh, a material manifestation, if you like, of the soul's expression. And so it's an energy coming from the soul that you're actually talking to, not the soul itself. Although uh, when you get into that kind of state, you're a- a- able to absorb thousands and hundreds of thousands, in fact, of conversations all at the same time. So you know how God can absorb billions of conversations at the mm, same time mm. and interact with us at as fast as we can feel or think something. 
then when we become at one with our own soulmate, we have the capacity to absorb hundreds of thousands of such conversations at the same time. Wow. In other words, we have the ability to interact with hundreds of thousands of people all at the same time at the speed that the person's interacting. Mm. But for us, that's very slow. Does that make <laughs> sense? And that's how my mother and father are too. Mm. They can interact with hundreds of thousands of beings all at the same time mm. because their capacity, their soul capacity has grown so mm. much and become more like gods mm. that, that they have the ability mm. to have all of these conversations that are real for all the people experiencing yeah. them. So that would be ins inspiring. Oh, so yeah, that, that, yes. that would be an actual source of inspiration. For of course. They're not only a source of inspiration from a personal one-on-one -on -one discussion level, mm. but they're also a source of inspiration in that they've reached the soul union condition. Yeah and therefore a source of inspiration to any spirit who has yet to reach that condition. Mm. So they're mm. a source of inspiration on many levels, mm. not just on a physical level of sharing truth or sharing love with a person in any of the dimensions below mm. their existence. Wow, 36 up to the 36th yeah. level, gee. Yeah, as far as I'm, I'm aware at this point. Like, <laughs> when I, I, I went through a stage a few months ago of just... Uh, having some greater awarenesses about my spirit life and as a result realising that there were more transitions but, uh, um, than 20 mm. and 22 mm. and realising that there were actually transitions that happened at every seventh boundary yeah. that included incorporating some of God's attributes and qualities yes. into the human soul. And, uh, and, you know, I remembered the process of entering the 15th uh, dimension in a and, and receiving the ability to create, so to create living creatures. Mm. Not, cre not souls, not human souls, but living creatures that, that had life in a spirit body and a material body, mm. had the ability to create, whereas I never had that ability to create that before that time. Mm. Does that make sense? So while I was alive on Earth in the first century, I did not have that ability. Mm. No. So, um, and then I realised that each transition that we went through, every seventh sphere transition, had the ability to... Um, you, you had additional abilities that God had that you didn't have prior to that transition. And once you made that transition, the abilities changed. And, and it was the soul union condition, the, the, the 35th to 36th sphere transition, um, that myself and Mary engaged together. And that is a unique transition because it also opens you to seeing souls. Mm for the first time in mm. fact up until that time you can only see souls through your soul perception through your ability to perceive their existence but but after that point you physically can see them mm. you can see what they look like and how they grow and how divine love transforms them and mm. so forth mm. so you know uh, and that ability only comes through the unification of the two halves mm. so um so there's, yeah, a memory, if you like, of the different transitions and what each transition involves, which one day I'll discuss with people mm -hmm. when they're ready for oh. those discussions. <laughs> but, um, but those transitions, um, and it's probably better that as well that we get into the same condition again before we, uh, before we discuss them because then we can demonstrate them. And it's far more powerful to demonstrate it than it is to discuss. Yeah. And, uh, and so that's partly what these spirits are all, including my mother and father, mm. are interested in doing as well, is making this transformation occur on earth so that divine love is offered as a conscious offering to every individual who's ever lived, yeah. rather than um, at the moment it being a distorted thing that's offered. You know, there's, there's things in the Bible and other holy books that indicate that divine mm. love is now available, but but are not clear in how to receive it and all those kind of things. So it's important that we discuss these fundamental truths first and then, then we can extend to the other truths about the universe and the growth of the soul. Mm, wonderful. Mm. Mm. But thanks for your time in oh. uh, asking me these questions, Kaya. Thank and, you very uh, much. It was a wonderful experience. <laughs> yeah, if, we, if we get some more questions about, uh, yeah. about Christianity as well, if you think of them, we're happy to answer more of them. We just feel that... Uh, we know that there's many spirits in the spirit world that have shifted uh, oh. listening to these questions. So it's been wonderful that we've Fabulous. had the ability to, to answer the questions as we have. And I'm sure many of them will have more questions as well. Yeah. Questions about doctrine, for example, that I'm very happy to answer as well as we proceed in the future. So Fabulous. But thanks for your time. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure. <laughs>